Hey guys, welcome back. I'd like to show you how I did some quick and easy weathering and detail work on my Gundam Barbatos Lupus HG size by Bandai. Just before jumping into the process with you, I'd really like to share some of the inspiration. Yoshiyuki Takani-san, then and now at a recent art exhibition, I'm sure you've seen some of his artwork before, but he's the guy who was doing the original box art back in the 70s, 80s for Gundam, Macross, Tamiya, and pretty much all of the really cool box art done in that time period was by him. So this look is what I'm going after today. Using a selection of products from Ammo by Mig Yemenez, here I have jet exhaust burnt iron, old brass to use as a base, and then straight brass for the upper highlights. These bottles are brand new, so I'm pointing out here that the pigments have separated. Uh, the top is a clear transport liquid and the met metallic flakes and pigments have all settled to the bottom of the bottle. So they really need a, a good vigorous shaking up and rolling to, uh, to mix them up again. The manufacturers recommend that we roll them between our hands like this, it helps warm it up as well. And then you give it a really good shake and you can hear the ball bearing inside release. And that's a good sign that the, uh, the paint has released inside the bottle and you're ready to go. Don't worry about over shaking them, you can't do it, but you can under shake them. So when you start pouring them out, if you're just getting a clear liquid, that's that transport layer I was talking about, you need to give them a bit more of a shake until you get a nice good consistency coming out, uh, like I'm showing here. Coming back with the, uh, the medium round sable brush that I used before in the color coat, uh, I, I wet it and uh, reshape it each time, drawing it back across the, uh, the direction of travel of the brush's bristles to, uh, to make sure that it forms a, uh, a shape into a point. And I'm doing it here again. And uh, I'm checking the, uh, the paint, make sure it's a nice consistency. Not too thick, not too thin. Acrylic paint, you know, you need that happy medium in the middle. And um, working slightly away from the groove there, the, the detail on the model, I'm, uh, I'm just carefully laying down a, uh, a layer here. It's nice to come back to acrylics after working with the lacquers, you know. I'm not holding my breath. I'm not worried about the smell at all. But I am keeping in mind that, you know, you do have a limited working time. You can get fancy and start working with things like a wet palette, but uh, that, that's beyond the scope of this one. We'll just stick with showing you how to, uh, how to lay them down directly there. Work quickly before your paint dries and you'll be fine. On a technique note, covering the, uh, the light white main base color is, uh, is relatively easy with this paint. It, it offers really good opacity and uh, I do like to let it poke through a little bit on the edges as a kind of self-highlight and uh, that saves me coming back and doing it later. It's all about saving the time, right? Next on to the gold base color with old brass, I'll show you just in real time how long I shake the bottle for usually for a paint that's in regular use. For these eyedropper bottles, also give them a quick wipe after you've used them. They, uh, they can clog. Thinning with straight tap water here, I, uh, I give it a bit of a mix and uh, I'm testing it here on my, uh, on my scrap paper just to see how it's thinned because, you know, some metallics, you can have trouble with them. Some of them need to be thinned with alcohol and different kinds of acrylic thinner, but this one uh, thinned with straight tap water just fine. Uh, it didn't break up. That's the kind of things I was looking for, so uh, I could go straight into it. Watching this back now, it really, it makes me laugh to, to look at how far back on the brush I'm holding this one. I mean, I, I, know, I know I kind of switch off and I'm very laid back when doing base coating, but uh, you know, I'm holding the end of the brush there. You know, I'm, uh, could, could I be trying any less? Seriously though, I guess it is for a purpose. I mean, you've got to save yourself. You only get, uh, you've got that little mental health bar that you see in video games, you know, and you've, you've, got, to, you've got to save that part for your detail work. And this kind of thing, this is just preparation for the show and, uh, and getting up to there. So, you know, take these bits easy, enjoy it. Uh, this is the relaxation part of, uh, of uh, the, the hobby of model building. Getting into the smaller details here, and uh, I stayed with this brush. It's pointy enough. I just, uh, you know, I leaned in to the details. I'll say this time and time again, and I think it's, it's really good advice. Uh, you know, I couldn't agree with myself more, <laughs> but uh, use, as, use as big a brush as you can for the job. Uh, it, it just helps you. They hold more paint. The paint stays wet longer. Uh, hold off going for the small brushes for as long as possible. And longer brushes also last longer. The more often you use your, your small fine brushes, and they tend to be very expensive ones as well, the faster they run out. So, you know, we can save that money and use it for other stuff like more Gumpla. 
So I've been really looking forward to a chance to try these new Citadel Metallics. So here, Auric Armor Gold. Just to lay a, uh, a highlight over the, the three foundation colors that I've laid down by Ammo. And this is the first time to use their new pot design. And I have to say, I don't hate it. It's, uh, it's not bad. You know, I gave it a shake and uh, I spooned out a little bit of paint from the, uh, the little lip that's, uh, that's up under the, the top of the lid there. And it uh, came out quite nicely. It's nice and thick. And uh, it's very gold, which is what you want in a gold paint. Next, I'd like to show you Sumire, one way of doing it, and it's to uh, put the panel lines in to increase the depth, shadow, and detail on the model. And I'll use acrylic paints for this. Black from Ammo by Mig Jimenez, some uh, acrylic uh, matte medium by Vallejo, a new product called Transpirator by Ammo by Mig Jimenez. My understanding on this so far is that it's a glaze medium. Let's try it out. So I've got some tap water, uh, some hobby color thinner from GSA Krios that I've placed into a very small porcelain dish. Starting off with black, I've given it a really good shake and why black? It's uh, for maximum contrast. Some matte medium and then beside it some of the Transpirator glaze medium product. Some pointy brushes. Going with the video format here, I thought it would be good to show something that shows a maximum contrast and it's very punchy so that it will show up well. As always, starting from a wet brush, I'm mixing up a little bit here on a paper palette. Uh, I thought I might mention this here. It's a, a waxed paper palette and uh, I bought it from a local art store. They're quite cheap and uh, instead of having to clean up, I mean, uh, once your paints dry up, acrylic paints, they chemically alter as they're drying, they cure. So once they're dry, that's it. You can't use them. So when I, when I fill these uh, paper palettes up, I just chuck them out. Now, here I've made three little piles of paint. I've got my, my straight black paint, and then I've mixed it with just a little bit of water to the top right of that. Directly below that, I've mixed it with uh, matte medium, and then the glaze medium, the transpirator from Ammo by Mick Jimenez, that's bottom left there. And as you can see, the transpirator kept the color really well. I, I tested all of these. When working with the matte medium, it's not bad, but uh, it, didn't, um, it didn't run. It still had a, quite a, a high viscosity, if that makes sense. But the, uh, the glaze medium, of course, that worked as advertised. It, uh, it uh, was very runny and it ran into the, into the crevices as I wanted. Please let me point out, I'm making this in comparison to say an enamel or oil paint based product that uses mineral spirits. Now, Bandai plastics, as I've mentioned in previous videos, you need to be a little bit more careful with them due to the, uh, the finishing process that they use. So uh, some thinners can react, uh, react with them and, uh, and will, will damage your model. So I wanted to keep this model fully articulated, so I thought I would try something out and just use, uh, for the main part, use acrylic paints through the weathering processes. And uh, it worked out just fine. Uh, the model is still fully articulated and uh, looks okay. My strategy here is to I move around the model and any of the places that are recessed uh, in the model, so places that uh, would have a shadow or uh, where dirt and uh, grease, grime, etc. would accumulate, I, uh, I give it a coat with, uh, with this paint and uh, then I set it aside to dry. Now usually when working with acrylics we have a short window of opportunity before the paint cures but uh, I'll show you why I've got that bottle of acrylic thinner handy and uh, that will answer that question for you. Just here I happened to capture uh, decent voice quality whilst I was in the moment painting and I wanted to share this with you, sorry that the voice drops a little bit. Now that the paint on my palette has dried, I'll go to, uh, to cleaning up some of the places where I've, uh, where I've over painted a little bit. I wet it with the, uh, the acrylic thinner and because my underpaint is strong lacquer paint, there's, uh, there's no danger. Very little danger. If you if you put a lot on, you left it for a long time. There's some danger, but there's basically little to no danger of it uh, lifting up the underpaint. So it's a, it's a very safe and uh, and reversible process. Now if you don't like the look of it, you can uh, you can scale it back. Make sure the brush is working with me. Here's a good opportunity to do some streaks. Think about the verticality again. Make sure they're going the right way, but careful not to overdo them. Make it look like it's a, it's a pivot point or a, something on the, on the mecha that moves and would be oily. I've often got the brush working the wrong way for me. It's for two reasons. One is I want to show it on the video a little bit easier, but um, once your brush skills pick up, you'll get better at holding it in weird directions. So. 
And that's just the time and, and effort thing. I might need a little bit more control on the arm. So this guy's still fully flexible. I'll take advantage of that and pop it out. Because there's some, some fine detail lines here. I want to make sure I accentuate them without going overboard. There we go, it's dried enough that it's still workable. And the extra that I've placed on there, I'm turning it into a shadow. For the scale of the model, you want some detail lines, but you don't want them too thick. And if you take off too much, you know, because this is a, a workable process, we can always come back and reapply. And you can see it's sliding very nicely on the, the Gundam Mister Color semi-gloss paints. And it's setting up a, a nice shadow effect, you know, for free. That's uh, it's an extra step I'm getting out of it whilst doing the sumire lining in. With the panel lining done, I'm going to do some quick dry brush runs here with Mr. Color Flat Black number 33. I've chosen a flat, reasonably stiff brush to use here. It's in reasonably good condition. I've used it a little bit. I tend not to use the brand new brushes for this because uh, it, it does, it is a little bit destructive on the brushes. And I'm using the paint directly from the, the bottle, uh, thick. I'm not diluting it, not adding thinner at all. I mean, you want the paint to be just short of, uh, of drying out. That's one of the reasons it's called dry brushing. And I've gone with black again for, uh, it's a theme I'm going to keep with this model to use it for, for maximum contrast and something to, to show you. It's, uh, it's a very fast way to get a quick uh, and decent result. And uh, just, just by way of background, uh, I, I, I started using this technique when I needed to do uh, weather and show a very punchy contrast for models for hobby Japan footage. One of the reasons for this is that the, the main photographer there, Honma-san, a uh, lovely old bloke, and uh, he's been doing it, the, the main principal photography there, since the 1980s, basically from just after when they started. And uh, he's a really good photographer, but his style is that uh, he does everything in camera, he doesn't do a lot of post-production work. So you need something that reads principally in camera. So um, I took this cue from, from prop building uh, models, you know, to get them to show up properly for Hobby Japan photography, you need to basically build them to a movie prop level, and, uh, and, and that's what I'm doing here. Now you can see, I'm very simply, I've got the brush just damp, it's got just enough brush for it to catch the edges of the model, and I tend to work against the, uh, the flow of light, as we would see it reach the model. So, for shadows, you brush upwards on the model. Uh, and conversely to that, for highlights, you would then brush downwards. That's the general rule of thumb, but uh, on this model, because it's white, uh, I'm, I'm also moving the brush around to catch any edges that I think will, will benefit from this, because, you know, white doesn't self-highlight very well, so we need to, uh, we need to show the edge and, and give it a, an opportunity for it to be, look separate from the rest of the model. This is kind of the opposite effect of the panel lining. On the panel lining, we're, we're, we're defining and showing the deeper recesses of the model. With this light dry brush run, what I'm doing is I'm defining the outer edges of the model. And uh, these again hark back to the, my experience as a 2D artist in that, um, you know, for the, 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 the deeper recesses of the model, we draw them in. And for the outline of the model, of course, you have to draw that as well. The same effects can be applied to 3D models to, to help define and shape the form factor and make it visually appealing to us as we, as we look over it. Now, whilst the, the brush is still uh, relatively damp, the, the, the paint hasn't started to set up yet. Now, this is lacquer paint I'm using. Uh, you know, word to the wise, it is difficult to, to re recover from this process, but you know, it's not impossible. I would just repaint the white if I really messed it up. But you know, I've been doing this for a while. I'm reasonably well controlled with it. Um, so whilst I'm at this stage, I, uh, I mostly stick to the, the bigger surfaces, the largest edges, and, uh, and give them a very gentle wipe with it. As the brush starts to dry out, you can be more and more aggressive with it and use it to, to reach into other places. And, and then I'll start looking at finer details. You see I'm moving up towards the headpiece here. Almost done and starting to look not too bad. We'll move on to a final step and give it some more dirt effects on the feet. And for that, I'm going to use some earth effects from Ammo by Mig Yemenes. 
Let me take a quick moment to talk about this. I understand the dilemma with the ammo products in that there's so many. I honestly get a little bit lost into which one I use, so I just choose them by color. So I pulled out all of the products that they sent me, including their enamel odorless thinners that said dirt or earth or such, such an effect on them. And uh, we'll go through those colors and choose them. I hope you don't mind a friendly word of advice, but just be very careful when you go to their web store the uh, ammo by Mig Yemenes, they've got so many fantastic products that it's really hard to choose from. So, you know, as I'm going through these videos, I'll show you different products that they've sent me. And uh, if you like the look of them and the effect that they've achieved, I'll put the links for the exact products in the description below. So even with all of those choices, I thought, well, the purpose of this video is, is to establish a good base with everybody who's watching with me. So I went with the standard brown uh, earth and uh, great color and it's it's nice and neutral you know it'll, it'll work on most things but especially I thought because I'm tying together red white and uh, dark gray on the feet uh, I thought it would work quite well and uh, the effect was was quite pleasing so mixing up some with my stirrer the ammo products they re really benefit from using the uh, the battery operated stirrer there by wave to uh, to really mix it up make sure you're getting all of the uh, the paint particles are up into suspension there and I've spooned some of it out into one of those wave uh, number two size uh, paint dishes and uh, I've not added anything no thinner nothing this is straight straight from the um, straight from the bottle it's it's nice and thick now, apologies for getting a little bit out of shot there that's my newness with making videos I uh, was getting I was really into this and getting excited about making it dirty and I started wandering out of shot now, after I realized I've, I've, got enough, uh, I've got enough paint here, I, uh, I clean my brush off. I just get rid of the excess there. I clean it off in, in the lacquer thinner that uh, I was using in previous steps. Uh, it's, I, haven't, I haven't renewed it, it's, it's the same stuff. And um, it, it evaporates quickly enough. You can see I'm, I'm cleaning it off and dry Cleaning the brush with lacquer thinner and drying it off to then quickly use odorless enamel thinner. Now, technically this shouldn't work, but it, it just does. Now putting the brush back into the odorless enamel thinner, uh, I then, using that damp brush, start reworking the, uh, the earth product around on the feet. I've been very careful in this stage to, uh, to use the, uh, the enamel thinner very sparingly and uh, only on the fixed surfaces and panels. I've been very careful not to let it any go anywhere near the joints and uh, I'm not using, I'm not letting it pool, I'm not letting it run. So this step, it's almost like cleaning up. You know, you've dirty, over dirtied your model and then you're kind of stepping it back now and cleaning it up and uh, you want to leave it at just enough so that it's a pleasing effect for you. Thankfully I brought the model back into center here so that it's easier to see. Now the, uh, the enamel paint here, it starts to dry out a little bit and, and that's great. Uh, we reactivated, it's very workable to, uh, to just lie in the crevices and the, uh, the details here on the back of the legs. Now you imagine a mecca with them running across uh, broken ground, they're going to kick up a lot of dirt, mud, etc. here. So uh, this is a place that we can, uh, we can go heavier with our details. And if you go back to the uh, previous videos, you, you'll hear me mention things about setting up uh, a weathering gradient. And uh, here you're starting to see it come into effect. The bottom of the feet is where it's uh, the maximum weathering has been achieved and then we slightly go lighter and uh, as we further move up the mecca because you know they're quite tall at 20 odd meters if they were real and um, we want to we want to imbue a sense of realism to them i mean they're not real we just want them to look cool but having some sense of reality to it does help for our, our logical brain to um to understand and believe the effect that we're going with here once I start to feel happy with how the feet are going, I start to look for places a little bit further up the model to, to apply the same color. It gives it a, a sense of continuity in that way, but we have to be careful. Uh, if you cover it head to toe in the same color, the, the effect will be lost. Now, final stage is to uh, add some light dust. This is when we have to, to try to use maximum restraint because, you know, the effect of dust is quite strong. Uh, think of it as a very most upper highlight for your weathering effects and uh, we'll just use it in a few key places to accentuate the previous work we've done not to overpower it. As a final touch I've come back to the feet again and uh, as a general rule of thumb we can layer brighter colors over the darker ones for the, uh, for the weathering effect on the feet. 
Now, I hope this video hasn't run too long. Thank you very much for sticking with me through it and uh, hope you like the content. Please consider subscribing if you do and see you in the next one. Bye.